Filipino. And I am as good a Filipino as anyone. My heart thrills when I hear the national anthem being played. And my blood rises when I see the flag fluttering in the breeze. And yet, I find myself asking, how Filipino am I really? My first name is American. <laughs> my last name is Chinese. And I am with my girlfriends, or more correctly, with my friends. Who happens to be girls. Looking back at the Philippines, then, and how it is today, change is undeniable. Everything has been going at lightning speed. Things that may have seemed impossible a century ago have now become typical, with new technology such as jet airplanes, cell phones, the internet, laptops, all these have made the world more interdependent than ever. Money, technology, raw materials, and even people move ever more swiftly across national borders. Along with products and finances, ideas and cultures circulate more freely. Many politicians, academics, and journalists treat these trends as both inevitable and welcome. But for billions of world's people, business-driven globalization means uprooting old ways of life and threatening livelihoods, identities, and cultures. In the midst of all this, we now ask ourselves, who is the global Filipino? If they are thirsty, I buy them a bottle of American Coke. They are hungry, I treat them to an Italian pizza pie. And when I have the money, I give them a real Chinese laurel. Considering all this, considering my taste for many things foreign, what right do I have to call myself a Filipino? Through the event of globalization, the influx of goods and products that enter and exit has increased substantially. The cultural impact of foreign influences through these goods and services have led many to say that Filipinos are victims of colonial mentality, which is the thinking that foreign talents and products are always better. However, preferring an imported talent or product to the local one is not always colonial mentality. There are reasons why such preference occurs. Wise consumers purchase goods with high standards of quality. If the foreign product is superior to the local and he buys it, he is a wise consumer. The market has become more and more liberal in the sense that people are given the chance to make these kind of choices, whereas to think of them as passive reactors only if the foreign one is inferior to the local and he buys it just because it is foreign made, it is stupidity. Should I not call myself a cultural orphan, the illegitimate child of many races? Right or wrongly, whether we like it or not, we are the end product of our history. Fortunately or unfortunately, our history is a commingling of polyglot influences. Malayan and Chinese, Spanish and British, American and Japanese. This is historic fact we cannot ignore. A cultural reality we cannot escape. For to believe otherwise is to indulge in fantasy. I must confess, I'm extremely confused and bewildered. Wherever I may be, Whatever I may be doing, I am bombarded on all sides by people who want me to search for my This constant rapid exchange happens often at the expense of cultural identity. The difference from what is local and what is foreign has now become very vague. The event of globalization has caused culture confusion and even xenocentrism, or the preference for the products, styles, or ideas of someone else's culture, rather than of one's own. We cannot deny how strong the influences of colonizers are. 
Tell me the language I speak should be replaced by Filipino. They urge me to do away with things foreign, to act and think and buy Filipino. Even in art, I am getting bothered and bewildered. Writers should use Filipino as this medium, the nationalist cry. The painter should use his genius in portraying themes purely Filipino they demand. The composer should exploit endless possibilities of the haunting condiment they exist. Only sound wonderful, but Rizal used Spanish when, when he wrote Nolly and Philly. Was he less of a nationalist because of it to be a true Filipino? And must he draw a picture of topless Muslim women or Igorot warriors in G-string? And if the composer inserts the condiment and he writes song faithful to the spirit of the youth today, does he become un-Filipino? We are what we are today because of our history. It pulses blood with traces of Chinese, Spanish, and American. But it does not stop being a Filipino because of this. The death of Filipino rap artist Francis Magalona started a new wave of expressing nationalism through shirts. Known as a lover of his country, Francis M's famous shirt is one that has the sun and the stars of the Philippine flag. Then, a wave of other shirts followed, from the polo shirts that bear the embroidered archipelago to depictions of Rizal wearing aviators. The reinvention and modern adaptation of classic symbols of Filipino culture shows how the youth expresses their own brand of nationalism, bringing the international to the local. Our culture are tinges with foreign influences, but it has become rich there. This, this mingling, mingling, in fact, could succeed us on the road to national, national greatness. Look, Look at America. America. It, it is, is a great, great country, country, and yet, yet it is the melting pot of Italian and German, British, British and French, or Irish and Swedish. When it comes to Filipino pride, it is almost a crime not to mention the pride that the Filipino favorites brought to the country, like Lea Salonga's contribution to introducing Filipino talent to global theater, and Cecil Likad for her piano playing skills. Deutsche Welle sponsored radio station DZFE, the only Filipino station that plays classical music, has a segment that features other Filipino artists who are well respected in the international classical music scene. The host comments that it is sad that Filipinos would pay thousands to watch foreign artists who are past their fame and can only get bookings in Asian countries, while great Filipino classical talents go to other countries to get recognized. Standing at the age of easy access, it is inevitable that the Pinoy music scene is exposed to international influences. However, the local music scene might paint a bigger picture. The best move for artists to be popular is to make the best sounding remake of a foreign song. Local bands sell themselves out for trying to sound foreign. Since the trend of discovering new artists through YouTube broke out, more Pinoy started steering their talents in that direction. They take a gamble towards being the next Cherise or Arnel Pineda under the pretext that they are promoting the skill of Filipinos to a global audience. Not everyone is thinking in that direction. These recent famous artists even used their break into the international music scene to promote or help the Philippines. Arnel Pineda raised funds with Journey for Undoy Victims. Alan Pineda or Apple the App, not related to Arnel of the Black Eyed Peas, not only produces Pinoy theme songs with the group, but also collaborates with the government to promote tourism in the Philippines. And the recently popular Cherry insisted that her role should be a Filipino exchange student in Glee. Filipinism, after all, is in the heart. If that heart beats faster because the Philippines is making progress, if it fills with compassion because its people are suffering, then it belongs to a true Filipino. And it throbs with pride in our past, if it pulses with awareness of the present, if it beats with a faith in the future, 
then we could ask for nothing. More, all other things are unimportant. Because Philippines is a multicultural nation, it is always compared with its big brother, America. While pessimists would find the melting pot quality of the Philippines as disadvantages in sparking an ideological unity, optimists see it as an advantage. The mingling of different influences makes Filipino culture stand out because it is an amalgam of cultural strengths and weaknesses. As America is a country of immigrants, Philippines is a country of migrants. But once we experience the being fishes out of water, we realize there is no other place like home. I have an American first name. I have a Chinese last name. And, and I am proud, very, very proud, because underneath these names beats a Filipino heart.